Did Dwayne Ullman, did he use standard tuning all the time with his slide playing? No, he, he used Open E for the major all the stuff that you're most familiar <coughs> with, it's more blues, trouble no more. Um, he mostly was in Open E. He only was in standard tuning when they would do Mountain Jam, if you're familiar with that. He would because he because he'd be playing normal guitar and also when they would play Dreams, which it's actually a good thing to talk about because that's something I do a little bit in some of the stuff we do because he would that triad thing that I was talking about where you you've got you know if you're in the key of B, you've got that he would be he would be really beautiful and lilting but it would it's different from like like Derek has has. You know, even though what I'm about to talk about is is major, it's different from Derek because Derek Derek has found this really staccato, really beautiful. He's got this thing that's really his own that I kind of try and avoid <laughs> because he because I can't do it better than him. Does Derek but, use standard tuning or no? He's always an open E. Always. He's always an open E. Always. Even when he plays without slide. Yeah, even when he's not playing slide, he's always an open E. Which again, if somebody had told him when he was a kid that that was wrong, you know, yeah. it, see, it's just amazing how common that thread is, you know. So. Now you got to play Dwayne's Gold Top. I did at yeah. the Big House. I've played all of his guitars actually. The the other Les Pauls too. Um, what, what kind of feelings or emotions did you feel? Uh, when you did that? Well. Uh, well, I'll, I'll focus on the, the, the gold top mostly uh, because I play, I've had the opportunity to play his gold top that he used on Layla and he used on the first couple of records and a bunch of stuff in Muscle Shoals. I've played it a bunch of times. I've been really, really grateful because I met the guy who owned it, who owns it rather, years ago. And we've been friends for years. And, you know, I used it at the Ryman Auditorium. I used it um, the first time the band played in Macon subsequent times we played in Macon. So I've had a, a bit of history with that particular guitar where I've played it like, you know, many times now. But getting to make our new record with it, because we made our record at the big house, their old house there in Macon, Georgia. Um, it was pretty crazy, man, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, it's hard, it, 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 part of me was trying to get work done because like I'm there and I'm, I, you know, I ended up producing the record so it's like I was, <laughs> things were working we were getting good takes and so in my mind I'm thinking okay well what what you know okay well let's overdub let's overdub this now because you know they're gonna reset this and then we're gonna okay now let's run through this so my head was kind of in a, several different places at once but I stopped myself a couple of times to just kind of take in how heavy that was because it was a huge honor because you know as far as like what I would call baby boomer you know guitarists anyone who like isn't an old blues guy or rhythm and blues guy or whatever you know Dwayne and Michael Bloomfield are probably my biggest heroes you know and so Dwayne you know playing his guitar in his old house you know going up and laying on his bed you know it was pretty it was hip man it was uh, <laughs> it was something else you know and uh, you know the guitars uh, you know I've had the opportunity to play lots of really nice old guitars and you know that one's got a sound. You know it's got a vibe to it. You know, but I will say this though, of the because he had two other bursts. He had a he had the one that he traded the gold top for, which he used on Fillmore East, and then he had the one that everybody kind of you know connects with him, the dark burst with the real flamey that he only had for a few months. You know, he he got that in June and he died in October of '71. That one's a that guitar. The dark burst. It's, I played that in the Fillmore burst in New York a couple of years ago, and um, and uh, I played a lot of old Les Pauls, which I've got one right behind me that I didn't get a chance to play. Oh, here, actually, here we'll, we'll, we'll do that because yeah, yeah, why would I not? But um, anyway, I've had the chance to play many, and and the one, the that one is sick. So anyway, this is an old. This is a 60 Les Paul um, that I've had out on the road. I've, taught, I've brought this all over the world now. And uh, it's... Um, uh, these old guitars, you know, there's a certain... 
you know, voodoo that they have. I know Willie has is, is, uh, got some fun stuff in here. And, um, you know. I'm going to have you play this one too. Bring it. Because, uh, you know, Just because you got two bursts in here. Yeah, two in bursts in the same room is a really hard it's thing. It's a really hard thing these I days. I have my eye on this one, so I got it. Got it. <laughs> 